This is Public Resource. the TDM Today Show starring Roger Magulis. Roger, how are you? Great. How are you, Carl? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. So I think we've we've reached a milestone. Uh, the special index to plant science is ready for release. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. What we did is we took a list of plants that are associated with research into Ayurvedic medicine and started running that against our abstraction of the science journals to look for article matches. And we did that alphabetically. And some letters of the alphabet have a lot of plants, some don't have very many. And we went through and were able to calculate how many articles and references to those articles that address those plants. You know, the kind of information a researcher can use to figure out, you know, a plant or its variants that should be or could be a focus of uh, historical research. And, and that was a couple thousand plants, right? It was 3,800 plants, I believe. Okay. And you've got a second list. So these, these are actually not necessarily Ayurvedic related, uh, but we have another list uh, compiled by Transdisciplinary University. Uh, so we're going to be redoing this special index, right? This is not like yeah. done. Yeah, this was just, in some ways, we even named them reports. So these are reports that go through a uh, corpus of plant names and then looks for what the science is behind those, um, those plants. Um, and, and so future revisions are going to be looking for chemical names. You're going to be rerunning the search uh, to do a better job, things like that? Absolutely. We're going to look for, you know, we're going to, not only look for uh, other, other words in there, we might try some other techniques that uh, may help with some of the matching and so forth. For instance, we ran this against uh, unigrams, which is the one word snippets. And we actually have, uh, now we're compiling, and I think we're gonna talk about that soon, uh, compiling uh, bigrams, trigrams, fourgrams, and fivegrams. And we can use that to help with the, with the search. And um, you know that it's not going to alter results that much, but it might provide some key extra information. Um, and we're also hoping to have more kinds of uh, almost like training sets of what to look for when we're trying to support scientists. Okay, uh, so I've given this special index a name, and it's very wonky. Um, we're going to call this the Florilegium. Um, now, in the Middle Ages, uh, when there were just manuscripts, right, this is before printing, uh, what you would do is when you got a book, you'd be in the monastery, you would have your own, like, chat book in front of you, right? And you would write down quotes, and maybe different pages would be about different subjects. So, like, if you're reading a pagan like Aristotle, you might have quotes from pagans. And if you're reading, you know, the Holy Fathers and the Popes, you'd have another page for quotes from them. And many of these things were called florilegiums, flory being flower, legere is together. And so when you read a lot of books and wrote down the best parts, that was a florilegium. And you did that because you couldn't have the original books. You could only see them for a little while. And that just reminds me of Gitanjali Yadav and, and her quest to, to find journal articles that have these plants in them. Um, it's a great name. Uh, thank you for hearing that story. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so we have one other thing happening. It's not like ready yet, but it's going to be. And I'm calling that the general index to all knowledge. Uh, so maybe you could explain a little bit about these these engrams and, you know, how big is this and how much stuff sure. is in there? Sure. What we're doing, we're taking about 100. It's a little more than 100 million of the English language uh, journals. And we're running this engram um extraction routine. And so we're getting from one to five grams, people often call it one gram unigrams and bigram trigrams. Um, and then we're putting those all into these big slices. We happen to build 16 slices um, for hexadecimal reasons. And we're throwing um, these intersections of terms and documents into this um, data structure. Uh, 
Each slice has about 21 billion 400,000 uh, variants. Uh, that means our total is likely going to be more than 340 billion different uh, intersections of document and terms. Um, so that will be, as you can imagine, that's pretty big to look through, but it is a very complete, you know, organization of the science. Now, one of the things we're doing, and this comes to you at asked before about other ways we might do things. One of the things I'm doing as part of this, I also happen to be doing a keyword analysis. And we have, uh, make sure I have this number right, instead of 342 billion intersections, of doc and terms, we've got about 19 billion keywords. And the keyword algorithm, it's a really nice one called Yake. We need to test it to see how it works, but it might be a way to like kind of hone in on what, what might be important to start with, with maybe having to go through a little less stuff to find what you want and then maybe tighten up with the n-gram analysis. So we're kind of creating this kind of like, like nice complete abstraction of the, um, of the source science data that can be used to compile information about what's there. So to be clear, uh, this is, I'm guessing about eight terabytes per slice. So this is 120 terabytes of data. We're gonna upload this general index, which is just facts, right? We're not uploading the journal articles, but we're uploading facts that says this article has this, this, this um, word in it. And anyone else will be able to download this index to their own computer and put it into Postgres or put it into BERT or put it into whatever they want. And they can begin doing the kinds of searches that we've been doing, looking for plants or chemicals or place names or concepts. Genomics is another thing that, you know, we talked about doing and there's some genomic um, uh, kind of corpus uh, sets that we can use to, to create different indexes of knowledge. Um, so absolutely, that's, um, uh, you know, we think that this helps, you know, it helps scientists kind of organize the historical record. So we're trying to bring text and data mining out to researchers so that they can begin doing things. And I, I think that's going to be significant. Um, and it's, it's needed. You, you can't stand on the shoulders of giants if you can't see the giants. Right. I think anyone who's reached a certain age knows that. A lot of things that seem new, there was something people knew about them before, and it's worth understanding that context and so forth. So I think this is, a, yeah, it's a really important step. Thank you very much, Roger. This has been the TDM Today Show with Roger Magulis, text and data mining so that we may stand on the shoulders of giants. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Our work at Public Resource is made possible by a generous grant from Arcadia. Arcadia a charitable fund of Lisbeth Rousing and Peter Baldwin. Additional support provided by contributions from citizens like you. Thank you for your support. Public Resource is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation with headquarters in the state of California and dedicated to the principle that access to knowledge is a human right. <laughs>